The Real Housewives of New York City Recap, They Be Trippin'. Since this is the first episode where the women head to Colombia, we got our standard packing montage where they all throw their one pieces and dolce fringed wraps into too many Louis Vuitton suitcases. But not Ramona. No, she is showing up to the pharmacy dragging her right foot behind her in a pantomime of a Victorian prisoner who has a giant ball shackled to her leg. It turns out she was on vacation in Morocco right before this trip and fell down a flight of stairs in a random texting incident. Everyone agrees that Ramona insisting on being wheeled around for the entire trip is absolutely ludicrous. It is an attention-seeking ploy, much like Vicky gunned Olsen's neck brace after she was in a dune buggy accident. It turns out reality television is a contact sport, regardless, Carol is pushing her across the cobblestones and up the abnormally high curb so that Ramona doesn't have to walk on her traumatized joints. Even still, Ramona tries to wear heels because, as she told someone at the pharmacy, I hate sneakers. She said in like someone just offered her a stick of fart flavored chewing gum and she couldn't get it out of her mouth or out of her mind fast enough. Ramona was in rare form this entire episode. The way she treats staff still absolutely befuddles me. I'm glad that Miguel, which may or may not have actually been his name, just left in the middle of unpacking her wardrobe, leaving her to hang all of her clothes by herself. I have been waiting 10 seasons for someone to do that. Or what about when she goes into the kitchen pretending to be the staff's friend, talking about how she loves to learn new recipes, but she insists that there be no butter in anything they make for her. Well, then how much does she love trying new things if she doesn't want to try it the way that God and the chef intended? The one thing that did thwart Ramona was Dinsley's convoluted way of assigning the rooms. Everyone got a Tiffany box with a ribbon tied around it. As they toured each room, a woman opened a box. Each box contained a necklace with a housewife's initial on it and whoever's necklace was opened in that room got to sleep there. Tins had to stretch really far to figure out how to get Tiffany and room selection into the same gag, but she did it and it actually worked. Ramona was placated. Yes, the only reason they have to do any of this is because Ramona insists on having the nicest room. I feel like all the other women wouldn't care, but now we have to have the Jewelry Olympics just to keep him ex. Singer happy. Since we're talking about Tinsley, we have to talk about Scott, 
who comes on stronger than the perfume on an Alitalia flight to Naples in mid-August. Not only did he send Tinsley's hair and makeup team to Colombia with her as a Valentine's Day present, he also sent 365 roses with their initials in the center to their villa for their one-year anniversary. Bethany is not wrong, it looked like it was a funeral wreath. Tinsley should have put coins on her eyes and lain underneath it. After all of that, Carol produced a gift for Tinsley that was supposed to accompany the delivery, and it was a Cartier bracelet. God, this guy. It's too much. It's like lying down on a posture pedic mattress, but your body never stops sinking into the film until you are suffocated and lying in your own space age grave. Also, all of these gifts are a little bit tacky. Scott, the king of Coupon Cabin, apparently has money, but he will never be Vogue. He will never be refined. He will always be hot dogs and beer to Tinsley's foie gras and champagne. know that. The one who is really going through it, however, is Bethany. First, at lunch, Bethany ate the fish soup even though Ramona very easily could have warned her that there was fish in the soup. Turns out Bethany is deathly allergic to fish. We know this from her first trip to the Berkshires, where Dorinda had to rustle up some food that was not fish so Miss Frankel wouldn't die. Bethany had a horrible reaction and ended up puking in her room and lying on the bathroom floor with her clothes hiked up toward her waist like a dead Sonny Von Bulo in reversal of fortune. At dinner, Carol starts talking about her dad with Brian, the red scarf guy from the speed dating event last week. Bethany says that Brian had been texting her non-stop and trying to get together with her. She also tells us that after the event Ramona crashed his drinks excursion with his friends, but that he's not interested in her. Now Carol says that not only did they have a three-hour date, but that he's also not interested in Bethany. I think that they both handled this really poorly and the worst part about it is that they're fighting over this dude who, rightly, is Tom Part 2, asshole's revenge. He seems desperate to be with someone in this group, which is code for on this show, and will go for it no matter which woman he can rope. Bethany is right to point this out as suspicious. Like with Tom, Ramona was out of the fight as soon as there started to be competition because a man's only purpose in her life is to undeniably love her more than anything else in the universe. This guy is clearly a creep and they should all just be like, 
No thanks. Instead, Bethany and Carol are questioning each other's motives. Didn't it ever occur to them to blame this guy, who clearly should not be making game, is that even an expression? On Carol when he's also trying to bed Bethany at the same time. Let's blame him, ladies. This is just one more pawn in the ongoing chess game between Bethany and Carol, where Carol thinks that Bethany is mean and knows what is best for everyone and Bethany thinks that Carol is being smug and distant. I'm not going to take Carol's side here, but when Bethany said, you're acting like you won a prize and he's just a consolation prize, that was a bit mean and didn't take Carol's feelings into consideration. But that is Bethany for you. She's always been this way and she will forever be that way. That's why she can't seem to hold on to a friend for longer than three good summers. Next up, Bethany fights with Dorinda because Dorinda told Tinsley that Bethany told her she thinks that the house is junky. Again, everyone is behaving badly all around here. Dorinda, like always, is spreading around the gossip she knows like her tongue is made up of one of those free newspapers you get before you take the subway home from work. Bethany might want to vent about the state of the house, but do it to someone who doesn't have a reputation for leaking like an incontinent dog going out for a stroll. Oh, 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 oh,